Aloha and welcome. My name is Taylor Norris and I'm a Galactic Astrology Soul Reader and Reiki Master Teacher. And in today's video, we will be diving into and exploring the Scorpio new moon on November 1st. We're also going to look at a couple of transits, a few transits that are occurring before the next new moon. And we're just going to open our intuition. And really, I invite you to say and, you know, repeat after me if you want to. And if it resonates, I am so grateful to receive the higher frequencies of these transits. I am so grateful to receive the higher frequencies of these transits. I am so grateful to receive the higher frequencies of these transits. That's a little bit of Jupiter and Gemini magic for you. And that's really what my intention always is, is to bring forward empowering information that helps us to co-create with the possibilities and the expanded consciousness of the various celestial, cosmic, planetary, and galactic energies. So thank you so much for being together with me for this video. First, I would like to invite you to some upcoming offerings. November is a really busy month astrologically, and I would like to invite you to support yourself with any or all of the above. So on November 1st, there is a free distant Reiki share for the Scorpio new moon. November 9th, I'm teaching Astrology Basics with Reiki. This is an introduction to the aspects in astrology. So the Ptolemaic aspects, the conjunction, the opposition, the square, the trine, the sextile. And we're starting with these because they manifest in physical reality, the material world. There are more aspects beyond that, but this class, we're really focusing on those. And I will record a separate video with more information about that class details about that class. And the next class, all of this is on my website, taylornorrisreiki.com. November 19th, save the date, Pluto re-enters Aquarius, and I'm teaching a class on this transit. We will dive into the galactic astrology and also do a Reiki journey together, bringing in the higher frequencies of Pluto in Aquarius, rebirth into soul mastery, this transit that is really initiating this energy we will be in for the next 20 years and radically evolving, co-evolving and co-creating with it. November 21st to 23rd, I am teaching Holy Fire 3 World Peace Reiki Master Class. So if that is calling to you, that will be the last Reiki Master Class I'm teaching this year. So definitely consider that if you want to take Reiki Master all of this and more on my website, taylornorrisreiki.com. All of the classes are there. The distant Reiki share is there. And I am so excited for all of these amazing experiences in November. Okay, so some transits I want to mention before we explore the new moon on October 28th. It's a busy day astrologically. Mars is going to be trine Neptune at 27 degrees, 34 minutes of Cancer to Neptune at that same degree in Pisces zodiac sign. So this is a water trine. And the stars involved here are Procyon, Mars with Procyon, Neptune in this long-term alignment with Skiat star. Skiat star is in Pegasus constellation, Procyon stars and Canis minor constellation. This is the little dog. It's the little dog 
and the unicorn or the flying horse of Pegasus. So what does this mean? This is a watery energy. This is flowing, intuitive, emotional, magical. This could also be like needing to rest, needing to rest the body, needing more time to sleep, to dream, to meditate, be by the water, go commune with the ocean, the river, the stream, the lake, the pond, wherever you are communing with the water. This would be a great time to go for a swim and really know that this is like a bodily, a physical activation of the higher frequencies within you. So supporting yourself however you feel guided to do so in that process and knowing that with these alignments to Procyon and Skiat, there's this element of prophecy included, future visioning, messages, downloads, and real connections that we can receive and in a very intuitive way, in a watery way, where it wells up from deep within us, but also can be experienced more mentally too. So definitely a beautiful day for feeling the feels and communing with the water element. That same day, October 28th, Venus in Sagittarius will square Saturn in Pisces. So this is occurring at 12 degrees, 58 minutes of Sagittarius in Pisces. And the galactic energies involved here include Venus with the Great Attractor, Saturn with Atronar Star, and Eridanus Constellation, the Starry River of Life. And here we have our Divine Feminine Venus in this conversation with Saturn and Pisces, our spiritual inner authority, our elder energy, this energy of the teacher. And so here we have Venus receiving the higher frequencies of the cosmic energies of the galactic through the great attractor. So this is long-term manifestation energy here. Venus receiving Saturn, something for the long term. There may also be this activation of authentic value systems that match your inner authorities, sensibility, spiritual orientation and inclination, a plan for the future for the long term is emerging here. And perhaps there is a shift in consciousness that is occurring to accommodate the new awareness and the new embodiment of how very valuable you truly are. So there could be purification and letting go here occurring to accommodate this expanded awareness of your self-value, self-worth, greater relationship, freedom, creativity, and all things beauty. On October 30th, we have a rather zingy alignment here with Mercury opposing Uranus. This is mental brilliance. This is new ideas. This is genius energy. This is also please soothe your nervous system, invite in that harmonious system. I heard Pam Gregory talking about the harmonious system or the harmony system. I absolutely love that. Can we stop having a nervous system and have a harmony system? Please, that sounds much nicer here. So knowing that there's a chance, there's an openness for downloads, intuitive insights, brilliant ideas, seeing the bigger picture, seeing the vision in it just kind of coming in unexpectedly. Maybe it's coming in in conversations you're having, perhaps completely out of the blue, unexpected. And this is an aspect of definitely expect the unexpected be open to expansion, be open to new and novelty, and maybe something that might appear very strange or bizarre 
at face value, but proves to be the solution that you are actually looking for. This speaks to solution consciousness. And this opposition is at 25 degrees, 56 minutes of Scorpio Taurus. So this could be monetary solutions. This could be financial solutions. This could also be really like real world, practical, tangible, physical solutions, and also spiritual solutions, spiritual solutions that help us manifest and co-create in greater alignment, aligned with the new earth paradigm in physical reality. Mercury will be with Beta Centauri, Hadar, Aegina. These are three different names for the same star in Centaurus constellation. Centaurus connected to Chiron, the ultimate healer, mentor, teacher, guide, beautiful energy, Chiron, beautiful energy here, Centaurus. And these three names, this triple name star here is very inclusive of heaven on earth consciousness. This is this includes worlds where that unconditional pure love frequency was the norm, is the norm, this experience of going beyond duality. So little Mercury here can help us open our minds, open our hearts, open our beings, our bodies, our spiritual awareness to receive more of this unconditional love frequency. Uranus with Algol star in Perseus constellation, very much connected to the divine feminine, the cosmic feminine, the feminine power, really primal, primordial, raw, pure archetypal feminine power, so powerful that it's been very much misconstrued, abused, talked about in negative ways, feared, and so on. But is this power of the feminine, the power of the earth, the power of nature really arising from within us. This is a beautiful day to connect with water, to connect with the earth, get your hands in the soil, get your hands in the snow and the earth, you know, wherever you are, no matter what temperature you are connecting with the power of mother nature in some way here can really help ground in whatever insights and revelations may be taking place at this time and really even giving yourself to be a little wild and free, free spirited, maybe on your growth edge with whatever that looks like for you and is authentic to you because your honest doesn't care what other people think. It's about your authenticity and your direct connection to the divine and to your higher self. This can be a huge upgrade and greater embodiment of your higher self, of your most evolved self and your most evolved timeline and your most evolved timeline being set in motion in a bigger, more practical, tangible, physical, financially supported kind of a way here with community support here as well and so much spiritual support and even like a bodily adjustment to this as well, very physical adjustment to this. So it's really mind, body, soul, spirit here that's really calibrating into these higher frequency energies that are aligned with the new earth, heaven on earth, and the highest timeline for humanity here. On November 1st at 2.46 a.m. Hawaii time, you can adjust that to your time zone. We have a Scorpio new moon. This is the sun and the moon coming together at nine degrees and 35 minutes of Scorpio zodiac sign. And to just put this in terms of the body in medical astrology, Scorpio rules the colon, rectum, bladder, genitals, nose, sweat glands, uterus, anus, sacrum, cossex with Sagittarius. And this is according to medical astrologer extraordinaire Judith Hill. 
I put rules in quotes here because this is a word I am opening my consciousness to use other words for it. I was recently at an astrology conference around some astrologers who used words like host and guide for referring to this rulership concept. And I I really like that language a bit more than thinking about the zodiac signs or the planets ruling certain things in our reality. So if you hear me using guides or hosts and rules, those are all talking about the same kind of thing. So for example, this Scorpio new moon, I would normally say that is ruled by Pluto or the ancient ruler Mars. I could also say it's guided by Pluto, guided by the ancient guide Mars here. So that's just an example here, but does serve here. The two planetary energies very connected to Scorpio are Mars, according to the ancients, and Pluto. And this is a more modern linkage, Scorpio to Pluto. So the charts on screen here are the beautiful charts from galacticastrochart.com where you can enter your birth details and see some of these star alignments for your own natal chart if you're curious about that. The new moon is a time of new beginnings and starting a new cycle of experience over the course of the moon cycle. In Scorpio zodiac sign, this is mystical, this is deep, this is emotional, it's a water sign, fixed water sign, so incredibly deep, incredibly powerful, very much concerned with power, with empowerment, and can be reflected with big power or external power, but really the opportunity here is to empower oneself. And my mind is immediately wanting to go to and talk about the fact that the two guides here, Pluto and Mars of Scorpio zodiac sign, are almost exactly in opposition to one another at the time of the new moon. Their opposition will be exact after this new moon in very early November, around November 3rd, if I remember correctly here. So Mars at the last degree of Cancer and Pluto at the last degree of Capricorn. And we have been feeling this energy. We have been feeling this energy for a while because Pluto is very slow moving and Mars is moving pretty slow as well because Mars will be entering its retrograde period in early December. So it's very slowly moving through Cancer zodiac sign and it will move into Leo zodiac sign. So I'm sure you've heard many different astrologers talking about this Pluto-Mars opposition and what it could possibly mean. And I am not going to repeat any of that. Instead, I am going to share with you how I've been experiencing this and offer this as a way you can possibly experience this particular alignment in a productive way. This is very productive. Mars opposite Pluto, this is getting things done. This is very, very powerful energy of putting into place these things that your deepest desires, taking action on your deepest desires, allowing yourself the permission to really go there and think about what are your deepest desires and then write them all down. I'm thinking of that Jupiter retrograde in Gemini, write down all your desires I have a Gemini moon and Jupiter and Gemini. I like making lists. So you may be inspired to make a list and make a to-do list based on that desire list. Break it down into different actions you can take. Mars and really in the time leading up to this new moon and then in the days after, in the early days of November, you can just look at 
which item on the list of your desires are you ready to manifest next? And this is a wonderful way to work with this energy. Take advantage of it. We don't get Mars opposite Pluto all the time. And so this can be wonderful time for action that is aligned with your soul. Pluto. So taking action and there's so much distraction here with Jupiter and Gemini, external noise and news and controversy and all the different things going on. So really turn that attention, Jupiter is retrograde, back on yourself, back on your life, what is most important to you, this Venus coming in to its opposition, her opposition with Jupiter retrograde? And what's most important to you? What do you value? What is your soul growth edge at this time, Pluto and Capricorn? And focus on what you need to get done and what you want to get done here. What are your desires and how can you take action on those desires? And if you're like me, you have multiple lists of possible activities and things you can be manifesting right now. And so focus on those. Focus on those instead of the noise and the distractions and the yin yin and the back and forth and the divisiveness. You could quietly and powerfully be building and laying the infrastructure of the new earth while all the, the old paradigm stuff is happening. You could be just like, wow, like getting a lot done, making it happen, seeing it come into physicality here. And really, this can be quite empowering, incredibly empowering here with a real envisioning of, you know, what's next for you? Because as I'm looking at the Pluto opposite Mars, I see it's actually part of a kite with this grand water trine. So Mercury at 2813, Scorpio in alignment with Alpha Centauri, also known as Ptolemy, inviting us into a greater understanding of the truth, Neptune, in Pisces aligned with the super galactic center. So one of our very powerful cosmic points here, making this grand trine with Mars at that last degree of Cancer opposite Pluto at the last degree of Capricorn. So this is an opportunity for initiation where our spiritual and emotional expansion energies are very strong, our mystical energies are very strong. Our creative energies are exceptionally strong. And there is this opportunity for full and radical emotional and physical embodiment of your soul consciousness here with, with this alignment. So please take advantage of it. This is beautiful. This does not have to be doom and gloom and all of the, you know, chaos and controversy of the external world. Don't pay any attention to that if that's not authentic for you to tune into. I invite you to really go inward and and take advantage of this because we we don't get this all the time. Just quietly create heaven on earth while all that other drama is taking place and this can just be just incredibly powerful. So I invite you to experience that energy. There is power coming through on so many levels here too. The sun and moon, the new moon is occurring opposite Shadir star and Cassiopeia. Cassiopeia constellation, the queen in the sky. These are circumpolar stars near the pole stars. So they do not set at night. They are always visible. And Shadir is the queen star, this divine feminine star of dignity. We don't have many stars of dignity, but Shadir is one of them. This is according to the work of Bernadette Brady. 
And here we're invited into that pure archetype of the queen of leadership that leads with intuition and mysticism and emotional mastery, emotional poise. And so this can present itself, the new moon is opposite this star as, you know, like a dethroning of the queen. And I'll let you, you know, play with what that could be possibly, or it could also be the full moon, kind of this, this grand expansion and embodiment into the queen and what that means and what feminine leadership is all about here. So connecting with the star of dignity, we might be doing that. We'll probably be doing that in the Reiki journey at the Reiki share. So stay tuned for that. And that recording will be on my YouTube channel afterward, or you can experience it live at the Reiki share. The nodes in alignment with reticulum, constellation alpha reticulum, and the supergalactic center. So we have the supergalactic center and the great attractor of the super cosmic points very highlighted at this new moon. So the south node conjunct the supergalactic center, Neptune opposite the supergalactic center. So that north node of the moon is inching closer and closer to Neptune, spiritualizing us. Our soul growth, our collective soul growth at this time is increasingly spiritualized. And it also has this component of ancestral healing, very, very strong and a harvesting of the gifts of our ancestors, of the ancient ones, reclaiming and waking that up from within ourselves, letting go of any trauma, drama signatures with that, and really inviting in the gifts, the mastery, the talents, the magic, the blessings, and the support of our ancestors here. As we welcome in this new future reticulum, the net understanding our interconnectedness, coming into more of that unity consciousness, unification consciousness, our connection with the unified field of creation, our connection with all that is and each other, experiencing ourselves as one human consciousness, one earth consciousness, and this is also really speaking to the power of our community and our tribe at this time and our remembrance of the power of our emotions here too as the Zeta Reticuli species and star beings were ones that let go of their emotional body in order to ascend and really come into more of their mental expansion and their evolution of their mental bodies. And they were a species that learned the power of the heart and of the emotions for continuing on their evolutionary journey here. So really reconciling our mental growth and expansion, our evolution here, and not forgetting or leaving behind the power of the heart, the emotions, our connections, and, and even like our physical bodies here as well. Mercury in alignment with Alpha Centauri, Star and Centaurus. This is healing frequency, Centaurus linked to Chiron. And so this could be healing of the mental bodies, lots of different truths coming to light, insights and downloads coming in here and definitely connecting to Mother Earth, Mother Nature, grounding, supporting yourself in that frequential recalibration process here. There may be new awarenesses of what needs to be healed within your mental body. This could be limiting beliefs, thought forms, and so on, communication styles or communications that maybe the wounds are alchemizing into more of the medicine. So being very cognizant of your words and the power of your thoughts and your words to heal 
or wound or increase the sense of wounding or to heal and to evolve and be a real medicine and be a real gift to yourself and to others here. The mental manifestation energy is very, very strong. Venus conjunct the great attractor. That's like bring in the abundance, bring in the infinite wisdom, receive, receive the cosmic consciousness. And we could see this at a very expanded, magnified level and amplified scale as Venus is coming into our opposition with Jupiter retrograde in Gemini in alignment with this triple powerhouse here, this degree range around 19 to 21 really of Gemini has so many beautiful fixed stars that we can project onto our clip our ecliptic. So this is including Nihal star and Lepus, Bellatrix star and Orion, and Capella star and Origa. And each one of these have very beautiful energetic signatures here of intuition, of powerful feminine energy, of throat chakra and the blue ray, of angelic consciousness, of soul memories connected to the wild feminine and Diana and Artemis and these ways of living very simply in communion with nature and communion with the host planetary energy here with Capella. Capella is also connected to the Mayans and ancient cultures who were able to ascend and just kind of like pop off planet. With Jupiter conjunct Bellatrix and Orion and also Venus opposite Regal and Orion, it's very profound that we are seeing that extreme polarity and duality out in the mainstream narratives and the, you know, false information, misinformation, all the different narratives and noise and drama and, and chaos that is manifesting in external reality. So that's where the invitation here is to not polarize, be in the frequency of neutrality, of centeredness, and focusing on receiving that which you want to create and co-create and this immense creative power here, this expansion energy here. And something that I've noticed recently too that I definitely want to mention is that as all of the chaos, trauma, drama, noise, divisiveness, polarity, the ugliness, right, of external or 3D reality really gets drummed up, it's like my Reiki bubble of light has increased manifold. I mean, I can feel it stronger, more luminous, more powerful, more full on and amplified than ever before. So to understand as the external chaos or trauma, drama, all of that might feel expanded, expanded, expanded. So is our spiritual support. It's stronger. It's more radiant. It's more physical. It's coming from the comet. It's coming from the sun. It's coming from all of these countless stars. It's coming from all the planets in our solar system, all the asteroids, all the centaurs, all the dwarf planets, all of it. It's coming from the earth and the heartbeat of the earth. It's coming from within us, our DNA, our RNA, our muscles and tissues and ligaments and bones and all of our cells and atoms and molecules. It's coming from all of it. So really welcoming in and receiving that amplification of life force energy and the strengthening and the fortification of your own energy field to really notice that, be in the noticing of that and the receiving of that and focus on that 
as well as, or really even, you know, I invite you instead of all of the external that seems like it's getting like bigger and bigger, it's like realize how much more your own field of love, your own field of protection, peace, joy, bliss, all of the higher frequencies, compassion, empathy, psychic gifts, all of that angelic frequency, connection to the galactic, connection to the earth, connection to new earth, all of that is also growing and strengthening as well here. So we talked about Uranus with Algol a bit, opposite Hadar, and really just this what I was speaking of here, Neptune opposite supergalactic center, Pluto coming back into alignment with our galactic birds, Lyra, a Ladfar star, I really feel connected to Egypt and the Sphinx. And, you know, these are stars in Lyra that connect very much to ancient Egypt, to Atlantis, and are connected also to the vulture, which is connected to Isis, which is connected to Sirius, which is connected to the whole portal of Lyra to Sirius and the ancient Lyran wars and many souls then traveling to Sirius to establish new home bases and develop out and really build out the mystery schools, Sirius, the home to our many of the ascended masters here. So this is a beautiful alignment Pluto is making here with a lad far and more widely out to Altair. So taking that higher view and allowing this, once again, the Pluto-Mars opposition to be an experience of greater soul consciousness, greater soul embodiment. And there could be even more memories and activation of past lives, parallel lives, future lives, and really coming to know more of your soul, more of your spirit, not as some like separate being or entity, you know, some higher self that's like outside of you, but coming to know that really intimately and deeply from you being unified with you. Let me know in the comments below, what are you seeing in this chart that maybe I did not mention or that is really drawing your attention? I would love to know what you are tuning into here as well. One thing I'll mention before we move on, this is occurring on All Saints Day, All Souls Day, you know, right around Halloween, Samhain holiday. So this is a wonderful time to connect beyond the veil. Deceased humans, deceased loved ones, mediumship experiences, spirit guides, angels, archangels, enlightened galactic beings. So really being open to your psychic senses, expanding your listening, expanding as well with that Venus conjunct great attractor opposite Jupiter and all of the stars Jupiter's aligning with. This could be incredibly powerful, intuitive expansion, psychic activation, medium mystic. I'm just getting this sense of you know, light workers and light bearers and grid workers and all the different healers and mystics on the planet having all of these intuitive upgrades and many different souls that maybe were were not previously on a spiritual path, having spontaneous types of upgrades and experiences and kind of waking up of their innate power and getting really curious and watching videos like this one and and exploring and and getting interested in their spiritual awakening, their spiritual growth process. So to know that as you are somebody who may be further along than someone who's just brand new coming into all of this, coming into more of their psychic and intuitive power and their mystical knowledge and spiritual insights and spiritual growth journey to 
be a guide for those who are waking up because I just, I'm seeing that this is like undeniable awakening and activation on a much grander scale. And I'm feeling this is really like all November, basically, with this new moon, with Mars-Pluto opposition, with Pluto re-entering Aquarius, that this is like mass awakening, mass waking up, mass activation of star seeds of earth angels of light workers light bringers light bearers all of it that there could be reality checks and wake up calls manifesting in many different ways for individual timelines and also collective timelines that are really meant to kind of shake us out of any kind of hypnosis or stagnation or complacency so that we can really claim our power and be empowered co-creative agents of the new earth, of heaven on earth, of a harmonious human existence, of a harmonious earth existence here. So definitely equip yourself and know that you are equipped and ready for whatever is coming on and our spiritual support, the invisible support, the behind the scenes support is exceptionally strong and present and in numbers, quantity and quality, you know, that's really off the charts here. And you can see this even just looking at this chart, how many of our rows are filled out and all these different colors here. We are so supported. You are so supported and just immensely blessed to take your place in the circle in whatever role, in whatever capacity, at whatever level of development you are, and to know that your light is needed and your light is also being amplified. So be open to embrace that next level of light for yourself, for others, for the earth. I'm going to read to you now the Sabian symbol for Scorpio 10, the new moon Sabian symbol. A fellowship supper reunites old comrades. Keynote, the overtones of human relationships based on a community of work or experiences. This symbol pictures the essential nature of the bond that unites individuals who have participated in some common activity. The social feeling of communion, plus all that it engenders, arises after the act performed together. Activity is at the root of consciousness. Activity in common generates social consciousness and cultural patterns which become set in the form of institutions. A group personality emerges, which displays characteristic features and gives birth to collective emotions and values. Wherever the symbol appears, it suggests the importance of establishing or strengthening links with those with whom one has shared or can share living experiences. The value of comradeship is emphasized. So this is making me think of, one, the Fellowship of the Lord of the Rings because of that symbol name there with the Fellowship of the Comrades at Supper, and also just the importance of community, of tribe, of soul family, of that in human form, in animal form, in plant form, all the different physical forms of the earth, and also that feeling of fellowship and comradeship and community and soul family with Scorpio, the invisible realm, spirit guides, other beings, enlightened star beings, animal totems, deceased loved ones, the ancestors, the descendants, all of that, just like feeling yourself in that sense of support. And also I'm getting the image of like the beehive and the bees and more of that group consciousness, unity consciousness, 
in communion and conversation with the planets and the stars and the flowers and the waters and the fire and the elements and each other, more of our telepathy, more of our psychic senses coming on and the power of us gathering in circles, gathering in groups of like-minded and like-hearted individuals. So whoever and whatever that is for you, that could be sitting quietly in a circle of trees where you appear to be by yourself. That can also be gathering online in person with groups of people and beings who you have that heart resonance with. But really, it's like we are all standing together for humanity, for earth, for peace, for love, for harmony, to not forget the power of that dis- despite or in spite of or, you know, and consciousness of whatever the drama or the story or the distraction frequencies are, are saying, do not forget the power of community and all the support that we have at this time. And that as the noise divisiveness polarity gets louder, it's like the support is stronger and it's within your own personal energy field. It's within these circles when we're coming together with each other as human beings, as spiritual beings, as souls and spirits. I pulled a galactic heritage card for the highest guidance for everybody watching the Scorpio new moon video. And this is from Lisa Royal Holt's galactic heritage card deck. The card that emerged, I just love. It's number 85, living in the now. Cetacean dolphin parallel Scorpio water sign. And we have these watery dolphin beings here, our intergalactic, interdimensional dolphin consciousness, really very present, very supportive. What is your joy? What is your play? What is, you know, connecting to that inner child spirit that is completely in the magic of the present moment to not get trapped in the storylines that take you out of the present into the future, doom and gloom or different energies like that, different stories like that. Just keep returning to the present, returning to the breath, returning to what is on that to-do list, what is on the schedule, what is important to you, what are your priorities. Sometimes that priority might be self-care or sleep or for heaven's sake, just go to the ocean or just go to the forest or just go to a yoga class or just go and hang out with friends, like doing something fun, doing something joyful, letting yourself experience that that sense of fun and freedom and knowing that 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 is an act of power for empowering that which you want to create and have available to more beings on earth here that it doesn't make you a bad person to not be pulled into all of the dramatics you know go and enjoy life remember your life remember why you're here remember your soul mission and remember to laugh and smile and have fun and when things may feel overwhelming just focus on the present moment focus on your breath and even invite in the consciousness of your inner child to help you connect with that sense of playfulness and joy and presence and magic of the present moment and the wonder of the experience of being a human on earth. So I thank you so much for watching this video. If you want to connect more with me, taylornorrisreiki.com has all the details, all the information. And I am just so grateful for you and your light made this Scorpio new moon be just extraordinarily beautiful for you. Aho, amen, namaste, and so it is. Mahalo.